Hey guys, 24-7 Tech here, and the Galaxy S9 is starting to probably roll out to some of the people who ordered it in a few weeks, and here is the review for it. Let's get right into this. Okay, so first of all, um, I already did a Galaxy S9 review around three days ago. Go watch it. That's the phone I recommend for anyone to buy in general. It's the better one to get just flat out better. And for the price a price increase, it's worth it. Okay, but to get the differences out of the way, I just want to say that this is a top-notch phone too. So if you're one of those people who want a small sort of form factor, a small display, though this is really small, this isn't really small, but if you want a smaller size, you could say, because some people, it's not about the display, they'll take as big as they can, but in their pockets, for me, anything is fine. Uh, I use a 6.3 inch Galaxy Note 8 and a 5.5 inch iPhone 8 Plus and both of them fit really good. But some people have smaller pockets and they want a smaller device, but they don't want to lose the screen space and all the features that its older brother offers. Because almost every big manufacturer these days has sort of a bigger version of the normal thing, like iPhone 8, 8 Plus, Google Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL, um, Samsung Galaxy S9, S9 Plus. So I already did the Plus version review, now we're going to talk about the smaller one. The one which your a tiny little friend would want. Okay, so let's start it off with the design. Um, it's a well-built phone. It's a really well-built phone. The same materials used as the Galaxy S9 Plus. Fingerprint scanners in the right location, bezel-less display, nice curved corners, USB Type-C headphone jack. It's awesome, okay? There's flat out no way you can argue that this design isn't one of the most inspiring things you've ever seen on a smartphone. Because that glass sandwich just melts over with the edge-to-edge -edge display, which just looks phenomenal in my perspective. And the better the design gets, the more I tend to buy the phone. Because I want to see how it actually feels in the hand before I go and like buy it by paying like a bunch of money because it's it's yeah you want it to feel really good in your hand and yeah that sun is so annoying let me go shut it off I am back and the sun is out of the way now oh sorry didn't mean to mess around with it sun is out and as I was saying the better the built phone, the more satisfying it feels for you that you're paying the money. Because that's one of Apple's key tricks. Not a lot of YouTubers talk about this, but the way an iPhone feels in the hand always feels premium. Like, I literally held an iPhone 6 in my hand around a month ago, and I'm like, wow, this is like such a nice, well-built built phone. It feels so good in my hand. I could see myself using it. Not really, but... Samsung's gotten it down. Samsung and Apple have been really good in doing that. And Google, not so much. Um, but, yeah. Another thing Samsung does really well is their displays. They've been consistent overall, unlike their design. Their design was sort of a slump until the S5. The S3 was good, don't get me wrong. S Everything S uh, series until S5 except the S3 was sort of garbage, if you could say. And compared to, like... These flagship phones, that, like the iPhones that Apple released, it, you could clearly see that, yeah, people were going towards the other side, Apple. But then from their S6, Samsung got into this really good groove that they're maintaining. In my opinion, Samsung has the best design down, and it's flat out amazing. So, first of all, with their um, Galaxy S9, they have... This edge-to-edge -edge display, which just melts over the uh, edges, and it looks awesome. People say you might lose content and all that stuff, but that's all baloney. It's, it's not true, and it's just better, okay? The infinity display 
makes it even better. Like, there's minimal bezels on it, and even less now. So, it just makes it that much better to just view it, and it's just, yeah, awesome. And another thing is that super AMOLED display. 2916 by 1440. It this is one of the things which Samsung does good because Apple uses a different display resolution. You could say I mean Samsung uses a different panel because it's smaller, but I'm talking about the resolution that Apple uses a 720p display for their uh, iPhone 8, while on the iPhone 8 Plus they use a 1080p. And without 1080p, it's just hard to go. But this one brings it all the way up to 1440p. Which is the highest, one of the highest we've ever seen. I mean, we saw 4K display on this one of the Sony phones, but come on. Really? And the OLED, the AMOLEDs, the blacks are pitch perfect. And it's, the display is awesome. Like, phenomenal. And a third thing that it, that it does, like, awesomely awesome is the camera. Though it's not a dual lens system, which is... Basically, the reason why I told you to go for the S9 Plus is, I mean, you're not really losing that much, except if you're a, if you're like a big deal about optical zoom and uh, just better video quality because dual OIS, optical zoom, bokeh features, all that stuff. I personally would go for it because the S9 Plus is just a better one overall, but that main lens is what everyone's talking about. Now, okay, fine, everyone's just going for the dual lens system and just throwing one in there and saying, oh, it's a completely reimagined camera because we can make optical zoom these days. Okay, sure. But what everything, all the hype's about is the main camera. So the first thing is it comes with a variable aperture camera. So in low light, it switches to um, an f2.4 lens, which can bring like a bunch of light in and and actually make a really well-lit shot with less motion in the picture. While an f1.5 um, lens, which is the second mode that they offer, doesn't get as much light in there, but the quality and the, and the crispness... So when you're like a shooting like a mountain scenery, you, the sunlight's pretty good out there already, so you don't, you don't need your phone to give you extra light. So you sort of decrease the amount of light it outputs and increases the sharpness of the picture itself, which is really good, and that's a camera mode which is awesome, and it could actually potentially be useful. Like, okay, this portrait mode feature's uh, fine, but you could do After Effects, which could basically replicate the thing, but this variable aperture, once you take the picture, it's done. And this automatically does it, so you don't have to change yourself, but if you want to do that, just go into Pro Mode and there'll be a toggle called F1.5 and F2.4. If you keep pressing it and look at the back, it's just so satisfying. It's like, changes from a poop, 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 poop. It's, it's really cool. Okay. Performance. This is a sort of a weird one. It uses the same chip as the S9 Plus, don't get me wrong, but... If you're out of the USA, you get the Exynos 9810, which at this point I would rather get than the Snapdragon 845 because it has faster single core and multi core speeds. And overall, Samsung's been made, uh, made better chips than the Snapdragon 845, so I don't know, will they tune it down? But it already proved that it has better scores, so I, I wouldn't recommend getting the international version, and you probably won't be able to find it in the USA. So, just stick with the Snapdragon 845, both of them are really good chips, it's snappy, it gives you 4 gigabytes of RAM in this model, if you go for the plus one it's 6. 4 gigabytes is still more than enough, multitasking is a breeze, and unless you're like the most power horse like um, person and you need the best performance you can get on your camera, uh, I I'd say anything would be fine. Okay. Um. Yeah, battery life. It's good. 30 3000 milliamp hours, 5.8 inch display. Not the best you could get, but I think that sort of um less battery life is because of Samsung's experience over Android and that just takes a little more. And the AMOLED displays do take a little more battery than usual, so Samsung had to fit some beefy batteries in there. And but overall, I think it cancels out because you get wireless charging, 
fast wireless charging and fast wire charging. And Samsung gives this in the box to you, unlike Apple, where you have to pay around 85 bucks for it. It's right here. I put, I have my on my near in my desk setup. Watch, watch that video. It's this adaptive fast charging. It's not the fastest thing in the world, like OnePlus is dash charge that's blazing fast, but it's pretty fast. And when you need it on the go, it works. So that's that's all I need to tell you. In around 35 minutes or so, my phone's battery was down to like five percent. It went all the way back up to 70% by the time the 35 minutes were up, so pretty good. Once you wake up, it takes you at least a half an hour to get like ready and stuff, and in that time, it can give you a pretty good amount of juice, 60%. And by the time you come home after like four or five hours, you'd probably be down to like 15, 20 if you're a big intensive user, but still, it'll get you pretty good. Um, and the features, the extras, the one where it gets you to this device. One, that camera though, it's it's not technically a feature, go back to the camera segment if you want to see that again, but it's still a good feature, variable aperture is awesome, and something called AR emoji, sort of like, it's not anything like an emoji, it, I mean the name might be deceiving, but uh, AR emoji sort of scans your face using the uh, face re facial recognition scanner. It does it with 2D scanning, and it sort of makes a weird image of you. Trust me, it's never got it right, except for John from TLD Today, Jonathan Morrison. He's actually gotten a pretty good image of him, but Marquez, Dave, um, Lou, everyone. Not that great. So, yeah. This phone is also a pretty good... This company in general is really good at throwing in more features and taking them out. So one, stereo speakers. They sound awesome. Uh, 140% louder than the last one. Well, 1 1.4 times louder, so 40% louder. Um, and it's awesome. They sound pretty good. Not the best things in the world. Like, it's not Razer phone territory, but still awesome. Headphone jack, USB Type-C, micro SD card slot, which not really that present anymore, but I own a 128 gigabyte SS micro SD and it actually helps because for pictures you could just store it on there, but like for intensive files, like 4K video recording for 15 minutes long, that's a little more intensive, but yeah, it's awesome. This phone is the one to buy. I mean, I would pick the S9 Plus, but if you're all about saving that $120 and you want that small form factor, this is the one for you, and I recommend it completely. Thanks for watching, guys. Drop a like down below. Subscribe right up there. One click does it all, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.